So let's have a quick demonstration. Uh, I'm actually going to show you a beta software that I got yesterday. It's all about finding problems early. Uh, this is um, it's a UML tool called um, UML2 tool called uh, Rapsi or SysML tool as well. Um, so I have in my model two classes, a transmitter and receiver. Sorry that they're very simple. Um, but effectively, they, they will illustrate this concept of assembly. Because I can create a composite class called Builder. And in that composite class, I can uh, create a part, which is a transmitter, and a part, which is a receiver. I can connect those parts together using a link. Now, I can tell Rhapsody to create me this particular class. So create me a builder. Use these compiler settings. Mm -hmm. So I'll compile it with a GNAT compiler. Um, and hey, presto, create the system. Hopefully. Um, so my transmitter is sending messages to my receiver. My receiver is receiving messages. This is modeling utopia, isn't it? We can plug and play components together. Um, uh, we can also do something else, create a little, I can, uh, on this particular configuration, let's call that the release. Create one called debug. Um, so my debug needs to create the builder. And I'll, I'll get this one to generate animation. What that means is that when it generates the code, uh, using the dynamic model of code associativity, what it's going to do is add some uh, animation uh, statements into the code. It's going to run a bit slower, but it will allow us to see what's happening in terms of the software. Uh, I'm going to create my with. I'll set that as the active configuration. Build again. If I have a sequence diagram open, um, then Rapture will create an animated version of that sequence diagram if I have animation enabled. Um, it's not running yet. I can start it. Um, and I can actually see the calls on the sequence diagram that are occurring inside of the software. This allows me to visually debug uh, the execution of my system um, in my development environment. Okay. Now you'll notice that both of these classes are actually running the same thread. Uh, in fact, both of them have a state chart, so they have a behavioral aspect to them. Uh, so basically the transmitter, every 500 milliseconds calls transmit. Uh, the receiver, um, oh sorry, the transmit sends a asynchronous EV new data event, uh, which is received by the receiver, which causes it to call log. So that's effectively what's happening. It's running in the same thread. I've got that delay statement in there. Um, so you can see it kind of stops. Which allows me to illustrate another key feature of UML2, which is the introduction of um, active objects. The ability to say that a particular class is active. In other words, it runs in its own thread. Um, so if I make the transmitter active, Rebuild it, rerun it. You should actually see the transmitter is able to run at a faster rate than the receiver can receive. So the receiver is still waiting. So this um, effectively, there's a queue behind the system. Where asynchronous events are queued at the receiver. Uh, the the um, transmitter is running in a different task. Okay, that illustrates another concept of UML2, which is abstraction, working at a higher level. 
Okay, I can build the same model in C++. So let's go back to my presentation. So the benefits are, are that I can put these existing systems with their interfaces, existing subsystems into a particular context, and I can easily assemble them using these connectors to run and build a system. Um, the whole point of this is really about separation of concern. It's about being able to create software faster. Okay, we can create software faster if we can work in teams. We can work in teams if we are able to separate the components from each other. So we can look at an abstract level where you have components interacting, um, which helps us define the interfaces. We can then implement each of those components separately. Uh, we can also put components into different contexts. So I can take one of those components and I can replace it with a different implementation. I can do that simply by plugging and playing it within a particular um, assembly. So we'll have a quick look at that. Doing all time. My coffee. I'm having your coffee. Mark. Um, so here we have a builder. Let's get rid of this part. Imagine that was a stub that we use for testing purposes to get our transmitter to work. Um, I'll import a, 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 a different implementation, uh, which includes a banner, uh, which is in my desktop. So there's a different model created by a different supplier. And I can include this package by copy. So now I have a banner package with a particular class in it. Uh, it's a bit more elaborate, this particular imp implementation. Um, you can see that um, this port is actually what we call a relay port. So any, any uh, invocations on that particular port will be forwarded to uh, the things that are connected that supply the same interface. In this case, a screen class. Uh, the screen class has a state machine. Every 10 milliseconds, it's doing a refresh. Um, and if it gets new data, in other words, new characters are sent from the transmitter, it will add them. Um, I've actually got a factory pattern in here. Can do object oriented design with ADA. Um, so there's my screen. It's got a collection of letters. The letters are realized by the banner letter, and the banner letter has a collection of pixels. So you can see some other benefits here. For example, I can automatically render um, this relationship, which is a one-to-many relationship, unbounded. If I look at that in the active code view, um, which is contact sensitive, okay, I can actually see what was rendered for that particular relationship. It's actually a instantiation of a generic from Booch collection, which is a, a port of Booch components to ADA. Um, 